Welcome to Asset Analysts, the debate game show where the points definitely matter and we take things way too seriously. My name is Josh Johnson, and I'm joined here with my roommates, Nathaniel Jackson. Yo, yo, yo. And Kyle Jenis. Howdy. Stay tuned to find out who truly is the king of pulling random facts and arguments right out of their ass. Hi. Hello. Welcome to this Wednesday's uh, Bullshitter episode. We are joined by guest Andy. Hello. Uh, So the topic uh, this Wednesday is what is the best final battle in any film? So you can justify battle however you would like, but it is uh, what is the best battle. So Kyle, what did you pick for your best battle? I picked uh, the final battle between Roy and Officer Deckard in Blade Runner. Mm, sci-fi. Yeah. We like sci-fi. <laughs> Josh, what'd you pick? Um, so I picked the fight between Thanos and the Avengers at the end of Endgame. Also sci-fi. And fantasy. And action. And action. A little bit of everything. Nice. Yeah. Good Action, choice. science, fantasy. Yeah. Good choice. That's Good a, choice. Good that's choice. a genre. <laughs> yep. Yep. I picked the uh, battle uh, of Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, on Mustafar, their final duel before Anakin became Darth Vader. Well, I guess he was technically already Darth Vader, but... (laughs) What's the movie? Uh, That is Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Just wanted to make sure everyone knew. In in case someone's living under a rock and doesn't know their prequels lore or memes or whatever. So, Andy, your task is to figure out... Which one of us did minimal research to defend their film battle? Who okay. would you like to start questioning first? Let's go with Thanos versus the Avengers. Okay. So uh, the reason that I picked this one is because, um, one, it's one of the longer fights that I've seen in film, um, but there's a lot of emotion in it, um, and it... it is the climax for over 10 years um, of storytelling in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I really like that it's kind of, for the most part, kind of centers around the three main characters of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America, and kind of shows the way that they've kind of merged together and kind of grown together um, to become better and more capable fighters um, and just grown as people in general. Um, And, uh, I mean, being able to see all of, you know, the Avengers and the people that, you know, we had lost in the previous film, being able to see them all come back to the battlefield and fight together, that moment um, when everybody kind of comes out of the portals and, you know, Captain says, Avengers, assemble. Like, it's just chills. Um So, and I mean, the emotional beats of it too, um, there's, and I know this is kind of a controversial point between me and Nathaniel about the way that Thor was depicted, um, in Endgame. Um, but I really like at the beginning of that battle, he's still kind of in that depression and he's coming out of it and he's realized he's in a much better place than he was at the beginning of the film. Um, but they don't just automatic, all of his problems aren't fixed. He doesn't just lightning himself and God power himself back into you know, six pack shape that he has been for pretty much the entire franchise. Um, I love the, the payoff for when, uh, captain wields Mjolnir or it's like, Oh, you know, Thor is like, I knew it. Like I knew he was worthy. Um, and that it, it's a payoff for like the, the little bit in, um, age of Ultron where Thor is like a little bit worried because he sees Mjolnir shake a little bit when, when captain goes to pick it up. Um, and, I mean, just seeing the way that Tony, um, as Iron Man, has grown throughout everything and where he finally makes that sacrifice play. And it's not just the brute force of the Avengers that are actually able to beat um, Thanos in the end. It's him using his technology and his intelligence to steal the um, the Infinity Stones away from him and then finishes out everything with the same line that began kind of everything at the beginning or at the end of Iron Man one, the I am Iron Man. And then he snaps, um, which plays off of Thanos's I am inevitable. But that is a very, that that's that little bit alone of that final battle scene where the, the I am inevitable and I am Iron Man. It's, Oh, 
I saw that movie twice in theaters, and both times it's just like, mm. it's so, it's so cool. Like that's a that's a movie theater experience right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had chills, dude. <clears throat> the on your left, and then <gasps> yes. the portals start opening. Everyone starts opening. Uh, oh my oh, gosh, that's so cool. That moment, I'm I have chills right now. Actually, <laughs> I know. <laughs> dude, yeah. Oh, I want to just go rewatch this movie again. It's so good. Yeah. Oh yeah. That that moment, I absolutely love. Um, there are a couple moments in the battle scene that I don't love, um, but like, like what was there a specific? Uh, just, just the whole, we'll take it from here, and it's you know all the women line up to get. I just it's over the top. It's unneeded. We love we love women superpower or superheroes. We love it. I absolutely love it. There is no need to go out of your way to to do this. You know. Thing or you know i don't know it just it felt unneeded and over the top just I give them all really cool that. moments in the battle don't line them all up for uh you know i don't know just like okay. i can hear the angry audience typing yeah, in the comments yeah. Yeah, it's, it's okay. a joke it's a joke i, I, I get I, your point it's not perfect but i do no. think that it is uh it gets a lot of the other little things right yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that is, absolutely. That is cool. And that really, is realistically, that is not something that uh, that really bothers me so much as to not enjoy the movie or not enjoy the scene, the movie, like the battle. Mm -hmm. Like it's still so well done. It was just kind of one of those moments where I was in theaters and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, of course. And then it goes back to the battles, and you're like, all right, cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it just. Yeah. And, and it. I don't know. I'm no, by no means am I saying that there shouldn't have been a moment where a female superhero does something really cool and we're all like, yay. I just feel like the way they did it was a little on the nose and a little unneeded. Yeah, that same kind of principle could have been executed That's a little fair. more yeah. subtly yes. um, or smoothly. Um, yeah. I, I get that. If anything, you have everyone fight together to represent this sort of like unity. Yeah, but that's exactly. A yeah. Yeah. It, um, but they, it was no. Yeah. The women will take it from here. Yeah. But did they know. did they have shots? I feel like they did have like like small little snippets or whatever with them like actually fighting like them fighting the enemies, not just like the whole lineup of the gang or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It was. <laughs> I also thought it was kind of funny that they're like, "Yeah, we'll take it from here. We're we're badass." And then uh, <laughs> they got they all got beat down pretty quick. <laughs> It's just like, oh, that didn't last very long, which I kind of felt like was counterintuitive to the whole point they were trying to make. But, yeah, you know, I don't know. That's my only flaw with the entire battle. The, the battle is incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It really is. Well, and it is. It's like the little moments like that, too. Um, like there was one part where uh, when Captain's wielding Mjolnir, he bounces it off of a shield that he like he just throws his shield and then bounces Mjolnir off the shield and shockwaves Thanos the same way that happened in uh the first Avengers when they all kind of got together and he's trying to break up the fight between Tony and and Thor. Yep. <laughs> you want oh, me to put my yeah, hammer yeah, yeah. down? Yeah. Um but so it it's yeah, I mean little like just battle tactics and things like that I think are really cool. It's a it's a perfect summation of mm -hmm. everything that's like you said built up the last 10 years or whatever. It's just <laughs> everything just collides all at once and you're like oh yeah and the i mean the friendships there are through that as well there's a quick it's kind of played for jokes but it's um thor and captain are going back and forth switching kind of the weapons yeah, that they're yeah. using to fight no you take this one. and he says no no, no no you get the little one <laughs> and he takes the axe back <laughs> takes, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. which is you know even though he's accepted that captain is worthy and can kind of you know fight with with either weapon um which actually the um the worthy thing is only for Mjolnir. Uh, but there's still that like, no, I, I want the bigger one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of competition yeah. that they have. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> From the moment in Age of Ultron when I saw that scene, I was waiting for the moment that Captain America was going to wield that hammer. And yeah, when it happens and when it happened in the theaters, it was just, yeah, great scene. Yeah. Not even counting the whole rest of that battle. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just that that little segment of it was like, <sighs> yeah. Well, it raises yes. <laughs> a question too. Like, was he able to lift it in Age of Ultron, and he chose not to? Yeah. Elevator's or, not worthy. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, was it was he just not worthy yet? 
I think it was something. I think it was that he wasn't worthy yet. Um, I think he was worthy at the time and chose not to for Thor's sake. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of character development that happens after that, and then um, you know, phase three Mm -hmm. of the Marvel movies. So I think because that was before Civil War. Yep. Um, where a lot of kind of lines were drawn, and Mm -hmm. um, and then seeing. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about the character development of Captain later, but um, I would interpret that as he wasn't worthy yet, but he was kind of close to it. Um, Similar to in the original Thor. Thor wasn't worthy to wield Mjolnir until he was willing to sacrifice himself. But he wasn't able to make it shake when he wasn't worthy. Well, maybe Cap was like just almost worthy, but or didn't think himself worthy and therefore he wasn't. But... Either way, yeah. So, Kyle, tell us about uh, about your fight scene. So, mine is much less a physical battle and more of like a mental toy. Like it's a, a mental game of like cat and mouse in a way. So, the the whole the whole premise of the movie is um, Harrison Ford's character, Officer, Officer Deckard, is hunting down these. They're called replicants, but they're essentially androids uh, because they've gone rogue and. This is the final android he has to hunt down. This is Roy, who's the leader of the group that's escaped. And Roy is realizing that Deckard has, like, he, this is the, like, he's the last one between Deckard and his mission that he has to complete. And, you know, Roy is messing with him, like, you know, saying all this stuff to try and get him tripped up. Um, he even actually, like, pulls Officer Deckard's hand, like, through the wall. Like, he breaks through the wall. He's like, all right, this one's for Zora, break, you know, not breaks one of his fingers, but like dislocates a finger. This one's for Pris, dislocates another. It's like, all right, let's see if you've got, you still got what it takes to try and kill me or whatever. And, you know, Roy's chasing Deckard through this like big giant house or whatever. And just like, again, it's this weird, like almost kind of preachy-ish talk he's got going on, but it's, he's trying to play into the mind games of like, I'm better than you. Like I'm stronger. Like I can beat you. Like I'm more, I'm more human because even though I'm not physic like I was made, it's like I can still experience all this stuff. Like, you know, Deckard's hitting him with stuff or whatever. It's like, and Roy's like, there you go. Come on, keep doing it or whatever. It's like he he almost wants Deckard to try and kill him, even though, spoiler at the end, um, what happens is Deckard's about to fall off of this building and Roy jumps across and before he saves him, he goes, quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? That's what it is to be a slave. And then ultimately ends up saving Deckard from falling, pulls him up on the ledge, and then gives his whole tears and rain speech, which it's a very eye-opening moment. Like that's the that's like the ultimate like final climax of the battle is Roy has saved Deckard, even though Deckard has come to kill Roy. So it's almost like why would he save this person who's been after him? It's like that is Roy's last final deed. Like that's his good deed. To show that he's human. He's like, I could have let you fall, but I didn't. I saved you. And you will be the only person who gets to know about it, essentially. Like, you're the one to experience that. No one else will have experienced that. And it's it's a very, it is a very human experience to have been, you know, to be saved like that. Like, it's, you can see even during the speech that Roy gives to Deckard, it's like, wow, like this thing that, I've been trying to kill all this time is actually arguably more human than me because he saved me. I've been, I've been trying to kill this dude and he, he lets me live. So it's like I said, it's not so much a battle. It's like, it's a whole eye opening mental game that makes you realize, Oh, this is what this is all about. Like this is the final lesson the movie is trying to teach you. And that's what the that's what the whole tears and rain speech is about. The whole thing is well, I won't quote it. Um, the end of it is, all those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Time to die. And that's Roy's final goodbye. And then he shuts down, and then the dove flies off. Yeah, that's personally one of my favorite endings in film. Um, it's very poetic, and I think it's very fitting. Giving, given everything that happens up to that point in the movie. It's also just, sure. it's very impactful. That's the thing is like, 
there are there are snippets of action amidst like the character development, like the story development. It's like that's like the ultimate action right there in that like seven eight minute span, and it ends like that. You're like, wait, so his mission's complete, but not in the way that he intended. So, and then there's, you know, there's the question of. Is Deckard also the replicant? That's, that's, that's which... true. And actually, there's a there's a little trick for for those of you listening. Um, watch for... I'm not going to spoil it. For the viewers who want to go watch Blade Runner, watch the replicant's eyes for a little color difference. That'll be able to tell you. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that leaves... That's me. Um, so insert uh, swooshing lightsaber noises that I can't vroom, make right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. Um, oh yeah, real quick before you start, I actually do have this Lego set, the Duel and Mustafar. Really? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I hope you're prepared, son. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> reason I picked the Duel on Mustafar is uh, partially because of the emotional impact during the duel. Um, because you're you're having a uh, the the kind of the climax of not only this movie but the climax of the prequel trilogy. Uh, we've been watching Obi Wan uh, raise and train Anakin, and now we're seeing the not only the f- uh, the failures of Obi Wan in recognizing uh, Anakin's behaviors and and some of the things that he's saying. Um, and his lack of disciplining him, but we're seeing uh, Anakin's just fall from temptation, uh, and those things kind of meet, which it ends up uh, being not only <laughs> a really d- by far the best lightsaber duel in all of Star Wars, uh, just an epic scene, but a super emotional scene um, between, uh, you know, Obi Wan says it, you know, you were like a, you were my brother. Um, it's a very emotional kind of, you can see the, the conflict in both of them. Uh, you know, Anakin is, he has really fallen now. He has Sith eyes now. Um, and he's fighting this, um, battle because he is so desperate to save Padme. Um, but he's so angry at the beginning of this battle that Obi-Wan is there and he feels betrayed that he, <laughs> chokes the very person that he became a Sith to save. Um, it's just this kind of poetic moment of um, I I fell to save you, but I've fallen too far to turn back. Um, and then the duel ensues, and it's so well done. Uh, the choreography, um, it it's really really cool, and it's I think. Depicting it depicts their personalities really well because mm-hmm. um, Anakin Skywalker primarily fights with form five um, Which is a very very aggressive uh, lightsaber combat form and obi-wan is primarily form three a very very defensive Was it three um, or two? It's three two is the fencing one. Yeah. That, uh, oh, okay. yeah, that's What's Count Dooku's. Dooku, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Do, I remember do, now. Do, yeah do, do, do. <laughs> Well, I remember I, I read a little bit about a while ago about the different lightsaber forms. Yeah. Obi-Wan initially switched from one of the forms to form three because of the death of Qui-Gon. From, I think it was five to three. Was um, it five to three? Anakin switched from four to five. What was four? Four is the acrobatic one that Yoda uses. It uses, and Darth Maul uses it as well. Oh, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's using a lot of your body momentum to actually, to and the force s- to enhance your body to, 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 swing to move around quickly. Five is just very, very aggressive. Just like up front, like I'm just gonna overpower yeah. you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um. So it's it's and I think I just love George Lucas's writing and the fact that he wrote their fighting styles into their character. Mm-hmm. You know, Obi Wan, who early on, you know, when he's still a Padawan, is described to be someone who is super aggressive, um, but through Qui Gon's teachings through the experiences he went through and through Qui-Gon's death, he's like, I don't want to, to, I want to respect my master and, and actually take what he had been teaching me to heart. 
and he becomes a more defensive, um, a more uh, calm, well thought out person um, in Jedi. And that shows in his fighting style. You know, he's form three, it's very defensive, wait, let my opponent tire out, and then counter. Um, Anakin is always been someone who's just super aggressive you know uh, you see him rush count dooku in episode two and he and definitely his arm gets should, chopped off <laughs> yeah when he definitely <laughs> shouldn't have um and and even in episode three earlier on you know he wants to be the one to go into battle to go fight general grievous and he's angry when he doesn't he wants to go help fight darth sidious because he's this just aggressive loves fighting wants to go mm-hmm. um and in his battle with Obi-Wan, he really is, you, you kind of see Obi-Wan mimicking him. Um, there's that awesome scene where they're just, oh, they're, they're, they're not even other. making contact. They're just yeah. showing off. <laughs> That's almost like Obi-Wan, like a callback for Obi-Wan's earlier style. It's like, yeah. all right, it's like, you want to show off? I got, I, I did this exact same thing yeah. years ago yeah. when you so were a little boy. What is your interpretation of that like part of the battle? Because I know a, a lot of people have, take issues with it because it just seems pointless. Like they're just whirling them around. Is there a reason that they're doing that? Well, uh, Obi-Wan in general, that entire scene when they're in that room is just mimicking Anakin. He's just trying to keep up that entire battle. He is at a massive disadvantage. Oh yeah. He is much weaker. He is much slower. Uh, He's not as powerful in the force. He's more well versed in the force, but he's nowhere near as powerful. Um, and he's just a, a much, you know, more reserved person. Um, I was going to use the same word. Yeah. And so that moment is in that that entire room, they're just showing off. You know, that Anakin tries to use the Force and uh, Obi-Wan blocks it with the Force. And it's, it's all Obi-Wan trying to stay on his toes, mimicking what Anakin does and waiting for the moment. And you do get the moment later, uh, which has turned into a wonderful meme. Um, <laughs> but uh, to me, that 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 scene is a scene of, in that the entire battle is Anakin saying, "Look how powerful I am." You know, I am I am so much stronger than you are, and it's just him trying his best to, you know, prove I don't need you. You, I, I'm I'm above you to Obi Wan, and Obi Wan is genuinely really at a massive disadvantage just trying to stay alive playing defense the whole time uh and at the end you know at form three wins out you know he he outlasted anakin and he put himself in a better position because of his experience um it's all about the long game it is um and then there's the just the ending of the fight when uh Obi-Wan takes the high ground, um, which is, is an interesting scene because it's, it's one of those things where it's been memed, you know, I, I have the high ground. Cool. Um, cause a lot of people are like, well, what, what does, you know, what does having the high ground have to do with anything? Well, first of all, in actual battle tactics, having the high ground is a thing that you want. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but outside of that, it's metaphorical. Obi, well, yeah, it is. Obi Wan's at the top of this hill, looking down on Anakin, and he's like, "Look, for the first time in this battle, I have the advantage. This is the first time this has happened in our in our duel right now. I have the advantage. Would you just give up and 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 give in to to the the light and come back with me? We can we can work through this and." He yells and is like, I'm more powerful than than you or Master Yoda could ever imagine. And he just tries to do it and to jump over Obi-Wan to take the high ground himself. And he just can't. He's just not there yet. Um, he loses and... Becomes Darth Vader. Well, he was already Darth Vader. but He fully becomes Darth yeah, Vader. He, he becomes the Darth Vader we know yeah, in, the, yeah. in the original trilogy. He, he physically becomes Darth Vader. Yeah, he becomes the, the robot. Yep. Um, more machine than man. More machine than man, yeah. yep. But the whole, you know, you were you were the chosen one. You were supposed to destroy the Sith, not join them. It's it's Obi-Wan now at this point where he's, 
he's kind of bottled up his emotions this entire battle to try and just hang in the battle. But instead, now he he's he's won effectively won the duel, and his entire just heart is pouring out. He's just he's an emotional wreck. He's you know just heartbroken. He has lost his brother. Oh, I I I just love it. It's so good. Yeah, there's a lot of like Greek hubris. A lot, you know, it kind of yeah. comes into that classic, you know, arrogance and yeah. Pride before the fall. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I remember seeing that in theaters. That was such a good good scene. Oh, yeah. I wanted to see it in theaters so bad. It was in theaters when I was visiting family, and my dad was like, no, you're not seeing it in theaters. I was like, why? Please, 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 please. please. My mom took a couple of my friends and me for a birthday present, and that was one of my favorite birthdays. I was like, yeah, Star Wars, let's go. It was so cool. Okay. Um, do you have any like other questions for any of us? Obviously, this is this is up to you to try and figure out who might be, who might be not lying, but like, but who is least prepared? Yeah, because your guess, your guess is the only one that actually matters. Yep, we okay. we just do it for fun. Yep, we're all gonna yeah we're all gonna vote and we'll reveal the uh, our votes at the beginning of next episode. Um, but yeah, do you have any final final suspicions? Final you know. Um, questions no. both you know all very like well well explained and everything so yeah. this is this is a tough one this is a really tough one yeah. mainly not only because they're all iconic battles but like we all made our points very well like we all knew what we could eat like what we could easily explain yeah yeah and they are all very good, good oh, final battles, battles. Yeah. So. yeah they are yeah, I honestly didn't even consider that one, Nate, until you said it, and I was like, "Bro, yeah." It just like <laughs> it's just not only is it awesome to watch, but it's just such an emotional ending to such a good story. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hmm. And it, and realistically, it also sparks a new story. It does. That's so, that's so good. I've always wondered what audiences thought on the first Star Wars when it says episode four and they're like, is this a typo or what? You know, yeah. when you see oh, like it, when t- they go yeah. back and edit it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it was originally just labeled Star Wars when it released in theaters and then they went back and renamed mm-hmm. it after, uh, Empire Strikes came out. They went back and named dubbed it, a, it new a new hope. Yeah. Oh. So, but I don't think they called them four, five and six until it was announced they were going to do prequels. Mm hmm. But maybe they did. I could be wrong about that. Doesn't the title crawl have four, yeah. five, and six? Then they do. They do now. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know if that was added. It probably was. They might have. Because they might have had the subtitle "A New Hope" in the original one. We'd have to ask our parents about this. <laughs> I well, I have I the original VHS trilogy, the un, mm-hmm. the non-special edition one. So they're yeah. the unedited oh. ones, and it they're in there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, but so they might just yeah. call it Star Wars and then just, just don't. put a new hope in the title crawl or whatever. Yeah. <clears> hmm. <throat> yeah. I mean nonlinear storytelling isn't that yeah. Kind of out of, out of I the mean blue. it was then. Well it wasn't it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't popular. Like no mainstream movies were really doing like this movie before this. Like there were definitely prequels made out of popular demand. Well but I don't know when um, Quentin Tarantino. I don't know when his first movies came out. It's um, like ninety two for Reservoir Dogs, I think. Okay, and Pulp yeah. Fiction. Pulp Fiction was ninety four. Four, yeah. Okay, Jurassic okay, Park yeah. So it was kind of after that. Yeah, but. yeah just, just twenty some years. <laughs> All right. Well, I just mean like, <laughs> yeah, nonlinear storytelling. Maybe on the scale of you know, yeah. we're doing three movies that take place yeah. at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not to that scale, but... Yeah. Was Star Wars not mainstream when it came out in 77? No, it definitely was. I was about to say, I'm like... I'm just chill. saying no other mainstream movies really did this. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. Thank you for yeah. clarifying. Yeah, I mean, it set all kinds of records. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet. So. All right. Well... Good stuff, guys. That was, that was a fun episode. 
I genuinely don't know who it is. I'm, I don't either. <laughs> I wrote down my guess and I'm like, dang. I, I'm at a slight disadvantage because I don't, I don't remember the final battle of Blade Runner all that well. I've so, seen this movie like seven or eight times over the past year. Yeah. Even if it were me, I know this scene very well. Which is what also makes this a little difficult is that you could like, if you watched it like last week, then mm-hmm. you could still just remember things. Yeah, I think and the last time I watched it, it was a couple weeks ago or something within the last month ish. Yeah. But, um, this okay. is a tough one. Yeah. All right, well, we'll go ahead and put our votes in. Um, If nobody else has any other questions or anything like that, then we will see you on Friday. Bye! Well, that's it for today's episode. Be sure to join us on the next episode where we will continue to debate as good friends do. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube and stay up to date on all things Asshat and to participate in polls and activities throughout the week based on the themes of the upcoming episodes. We also started a Patreon for those of you who are interested in showing your support in a more direct way. On our Patreon, we have a ton of bonus content, including tier lists, loser dinners, and bonus podcast episodes. We want to continue making content that makes you think, smile, and especially laugh. And the best way that you guys can help us do that, leave a like or a comment, download and share all these episodes with your friends and family members who you think would enjoy our tomfoolery, our shenanigans, and all those other crazy words that encapsulate our content.